Next step, how can you design to avoid resource depletion? Can you even create resources? First, we all know about peak oil, and we all know that the main uses for oil are transportation, buildings, and industry. But what about peak minerals? Oil isn't the only thing we're digging out of the Earth's crust that's a finite resource. Electronics feature prominently in this mineral depletion, using things like gold, silver, copper, uh, indium, all sorts of things. And of course, plenty of other consumer products as well. This is a chart from New Scientist, and on the right-hand side, even though it's too small to see in this video, you can go to their site to get the original, and this shows the good news, which is that we are already recycling a good deal of many minerals. For instance, about three-quarters of the lead in the economy right now is recycled, and about 40% of the gold in the economy right now is recycled. So this is great. We just need to radically increase the percentage of recycling, because a truly sustainable society is only mining from existing products and landfills. So this next chart is from the U.S. Geological Survey. It shows the amount of total material flow in the U.S. economy. So not just rare minerals, but just everything that we use. Down on the bottom, the green line is agricultural and forest products. These are at least potentially renewable products. And interestingly, you can see that 100 years ago, almost half of the resources that we used were renewable. Now, the next line up is non-renewable organics. Uh, that's basically uh, petroleum products that are not oil. Um, and then the pink is virgin metals. Above that, the purple band is recycled metals. And so it's very heartening to see that that's increased a bunch over time. Uh, the blue above that is industrial minerals. And finally, the yellow at the top, which makes up about three-quarters of U.S. material use right now is crushed stone, sand, and gravel. I bet you had no idea that three-quarters of the materials you use are crushed stone, sand, and gravel. What do you use all that for? Well, you use it as aggregate in concrete. It's for roads and buildings, mostly. And the blue line below that, a lot of the industrial materials are also for concrete, it's the cement in concrete. And so again, that's for uh, buildings and roads. But other minerals that are used here are potash and phosphate for fertilizer, so that's the agriculture industry, uh, gypsum for drywall, also the building industry, fluor spar for acid, uh, soda ash for glass and chemicals. So some of that is the building industry, some of it's chemical industry. Then the pink and the purple, since those are both metals, those are both used in the same places, uh, it's mostly for buildings and cars and other appliances, and that's mostly steel and, and aluminum. Then below that, the non-renewable organics is mostly for plastics. And finally, the renewable resources, the agricultural and forest products, that's not including food, this is other products like wood, paper, cotton, wool, etc. And so those are mostly used in buildings and the paper industry, and some wood is used for fuel. Now with water, you might be surprised to find that all the water that you ever see is 8% of your water use. 22% um, of your water use is actually embodied in the products that you use. So the chair that you're sitting on, the computer that you're watching this video through, etc. It's all from manufacturing. And then 70% of your water use is embodied in the food you eat. It's from irrigation. The bad news is that half of that water is wasted, so that's several times more than all the water you ever see in toilets, sinks, faucets, etc. And it matters a lot what kinds of foods you're eating. For instance, a kilo of beef takes about five times as much water to make as a kilo of chicken, and about ten times as much water as a kilo of wheat.
So if you want to fix resource depletion, then your design priorities should roughly be these. Uh, number one, buildings. And in this case, we're not talking about energy efficient buildings necessarily. We're talking about resource efficient ones. So that also means longer lasting, reconfigurable, recyclable buildings um, using sustainably harvested wood, etc. Then for transportation, again, we're not necessarily talking about energy use here, although obviously oil is one of the resources that we're depleting, um, but we're also talking about fewer roads, fewer cars, less material in general. Um, then for food, um, it's largely an issue of water, but there's other minerals as well, as we saw. And then other industry like chemicals, paper, and electronics are important as well. And just like with energy, um, I would argue that resource efficiency and buildings and transportation is better in cities. So once again, it helps both buildings and transportation because with buildings it lets you help share walls, with transportation it lets you help share roads and parking spaces, etc. So what are things that people are doing to fix this? In the upper left is a product called Kirei Board out of Japan. Uh, it's agricultural waste, it's actually sorghum fiber waste, that they've made into a gorgeous plywood. Uh, you can see what a beautiful pattern it has, and it can be used in furniture or building interiors, things like that. On the upper left, the company Method uses 100% recycled plastic in most of their bottles. Down below that, we have e-waste. Now, uh, Noranda, which is a Canadian gold mining company, discovered in the 1980s that there's about as much gold in one ton of e-waste as there is in 17 tons of ore. And so they became an e-waste recycler. And to this day, they're one of the world's biggest because it's a profitable business for them. And finally, in the lower left is Netflix. The company wasn't founded to be a sustainability company, just happens they have a very green business model, where instead of brick and mortar video rental stores, they just mail out DVDs. And this allows hundreds of people to watch the same DVD. Not only does that save the materials of the DVD itself, it also reduces packaging enormously, and it even increases the efficiency of the buildings because they don't have to have huge showrooms, they just have warehouses where they can very densely pack these movies.